I thought it'd be really interesting to do a video just uh, sort of recapping some of the things I've learned over the last few months just while I'm doing YouTube. This isn't by any means going to be a fancy video. I'm not going to put a lot of graphics up, show you a lot of fancy editing because I don't know how to do that. That's one of the first things I've learned about YouTube. <laughs> you don't have to have a lot of, you know, specialized tools or editing programs or skills to be on YouTube and enjoy yourself. And what I use is just my, my smartphone. I do now have a mic hooked up and uh, that was a recent thing I've gotten, but it, just to help my sound a little bit, bit. But what, you know, I started off, it was February, I was just sort of looking for something to, to keep me curious, might be the best way to describe it. And I, I, I've always watched YouTube, watched other people's videos, I love certain things, and I just thought I'd try and see how hard it is. And it's fairly straightforward, oddly. The interface for YouTube, is where you're edit, uh, putting your videos up, is very clean and tidy. So yes, you can have you know, all the expensive gear and editing equipment, or you can have a cell phone like I have. So you don't need much, right? That'd be one of the first things. <laughs> you don't need much. So yeah, so I just use a smartphone, I just upload it. I don't try to do any editing. Uh, I, I decided when I was doing it to keep it as clean and simple as possible crude might be the word, but that was one of the first things I learned about YouTube. You don't have to have a, an expensive camera. Well, I, well, a cell phone's expensive, I suppose, but anyway, you can get started just with your camera. Um, the second thing I learned is it, it, uh, it starts slow. You know, you put up a video and you're new to this and nobody knows you're doing it. It starts slow. So, Unless you're already a known person or anything like that, you, you know, you know, or a big celebrity, or you have a <laughs> a lot of money behind you to promote what you're doing, it does start slow, and that's great. I I mean, it was really kind of fun when somebody I watched my video for the first time. I was like, oh wow, somebody actually watched that. That was quite nice. Uh, one of the other things I've learned, you know what? You don't have to um, have a huge following or something. If you have a niche interest, uh, that's a good place to start. If you have something that you collect or you're, you have a hobby of some form, you can make a YouTube channel out of that. And that's what I did. I have, I have a niche and um, mine is fountain pens. And the great thing about fountain pens is there's a community of people who are all sort of interested in the same things I am. <laughs> you know? So I think if somebody has a strange hobby collecting, oh, I don't know, uh, bottle caps, you could probably create a YouTube channel and find people who are into collecting bottle caps. You could probably find a YouTube channel. You could, if you had a hobby where you're building structures that match matches or something like that, you could find a community who are into that too. Right. So the other uh, thing is, you want to set up a format. So my, mine is fairly straightforward. You see my hands. <laughs> you see the surface of my desk. And the reason is because I'm talking about fountain pens all the time. So that's the format I have set up. And it's fairly simple. It's very easy to do. I don't have to worry about my appearance because usually I'm in bad need of a haircut. <laughs> I'm not the prettiest thing that you'll ever see. Trust me. Somebody asked, when do we get the face reveal? And I'm like, do you really want that? Anyway, so you set up a format and, you know, this can change over time. You might have a set, you know, this is my set here. I have a, and it's changed a little bit since I started doing videos. You know, I used uh, different color backgrounds and things like that over time, but this is the set I have right now and I like it. It works well. It's my desk and it's just a leather writing blotter that someone made for us and it works so well because, you know, it's part of the fountain pen, pen hobby and this is one of the things that you people in the fountain pen hobby are interested in, right? So, Anyway, so there we are. So you have a format, you, you know, you don't need much, start slow, you find a niche that you're interested in and your format that you're setting up with. The other thing I, I found out is that by the time you get around 20 to say 30 videos, 
you will start accessing all sorts of analytical data that um, YouTube will give you. So they, it takes them a little while to, to uh, accumulate this for you. And, you know, it starts slow. You get a little bit here and there. And you can, you're able to find out things like uh, where people are, what countries people are watching your videos, uh, times of day, gender, uh, age groups. Um, you can see what time of the day people are watching your videos. Uh, what day of the week is your most popular? So as you get more videos, the analytic, analytic analytical data accumulates, and that's essentially the uh, algorithm of YouTube noticing you. They, they, it takes them about that long, 20, 20 to 30, and as you go on, you'll gain more information. And you can use that, you can look at that and, be, and use it, or you can just ignore it. But it's kind of fun sometimes looking at looking through that for me, because I've always been interested in how things work like that. And, you know, it's, you see what countries uh, have fountain pen communities. It's really neat that there's so many people in India watching my videos. And then I looked at in, up, you know, I go researching why and I realized there's this fantastic community and history of fountain pens. And there's these really nice Indian men, uh, there are manufacturers in India making really nice pens. And I have to get some of those pens because they're, they're quite interesting on my list of pens to get, <laughs> a couple from India. Um, one thing I probably wish I had uh, done earlier was uh, pay a little bit more attention to my thumbnails. Uh, and that is when you go scrolling through YouTube and you'll get suggested a video. And at first I didn't didn't put it, any information on my thumbnails, it was just an image, but now I use Canva and I sort of put my name on it and the rough title of the video. Even though it's still there, you'll, you'll see the title when you're scrolling through. Sometimes you'll just see a grid of videos, of, of still images from videos, so it's nice to have some information on that. So that's another thing I should have, I, I probably would have uh, been better off doing sooner. Uh, so thumbnails. Spend a little time on your thumbnail. Canva is a great way to do it. It's very simple. I am not the most technolo technologically <laughs> advanced human being. And my, my teenage daughter showed me how to use Canva. <laughs> and, and it works really well for what I'm doing. And, uh, and it's very simple. It's free, uh, nice and clean. And I can put up a nice little thumbnail. And, and, you know, put your title, put your name, what, what the name of your channel is on that thumbnail, and pop it up. Uh, banner art, um, that's something I probably should have gotten onto sooner. Uh, and that's just, you know, the banner on your YouTube channel. If somebody goes, you know, clicks on it and goes to your channel and sees all your information, it's nice to have a banner. Uh, mine is just this pen, actually, uh, a photograph of this pen with my name on it. And then it, I have a couple of links to different social media that I have. So that's something I probably should have done sooner. Actually, these two things I probably should have done sooner. And which brings me to number eight. And that's another thing. Um, make use of the watermark. As you're going through it, uh, you're looking at different uh, sections, like your there's a customization, a uh, little wand. You'll see it on the in, in the toolbox and uh, you take that and there's a little down in the corner uh, this pen is running dry <laughs> I picked up a pen that I pretty much ran anyway, so down in the corner there's a little place for a watermark and what I would suggest if you're starting out put a subscribe watermark there and, and all you do is go to Canva again and just you know get the YouTube arrow and just write some, you know, you can tinker around with it as much as you are and go into where it says watermark and you upload it and you know, it'll tell you what size you need. And that's all you have to do. So if anybody who's watching your video scrolls over this video, over this watermark, uh, a, 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 <laughs> I can't talk, uh, a, a little button will come up saying how to, you, and you click it and you get a new subscriber. It makes it easier for the person watching the video. They don't have to go uh, wait for your video to end uh, and try to find your channel again and, 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 and that. It just makes it a lot easier. So I should have done that really soon, but I, I've only done it recently. And when I did do it, I noticed there was a slight tick up in, uh, on that day where I was getting more subscribers. 
that I have been over the last few days. So that's something you should do, right? So thumbnail, banner art, and watermark. Those are some of the first things that you should do, right? Um, what else? I would say have a goal, set a goal. You know, it's always nice to have a goal. This pen is really running out of ink. Um, but yeah, set a, set a goal. Say I, you know, and as I read about YouTube and figured it out, I realized that the goal that everyone who does YouTube probably has is to get that first 4,000 hours of uh, view time and those first 1,000 subscribers. Now, why do you want those goals? Um, why do you want those numbers, I should say, right? So when you hit those numbers, you can, you can, or you might not want to, you could monetize your channel. I'm not there yet. I have, I have the hours, but I don't quite have the subscribers. And I'm not fretting over that. What I would suggest, when you're setting goals, and, and one of your goals is to eventually monetize your channel, uh, you could drive yourself crazy trying to hit those goals and it, it might bother you really and it, it becomes kind of a stress thing, right? So don't stress about it. What I would say is set those goals, 1,000 subs, right? And 4,000 hours. And then what you do is break those numbers down into small units. Break it down into a weekly number, break it down into a daily number. And what you want to do is hit these goal, these numbers within a 12 month period, right? So you got a lot of time. Um, and especially if you have a, if you're doing a, 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 cha a, a video channel about a, a niche that a lot of people are into, you should be able to hit those. I've got these hours, but I don't quite have the subs and I'm, I'm getting cl closely to it. And I sort of set myself a goal of say, um, five to 10 video, five, five subs a day is kind of what I've said um, as I'm getting closer to it. Uh, I found that early on, I, I got to a certain number fairly quickly. I got to these numbers fairly quickly. And this, this number I, I, I hit a while back. This one I'm at, you know, I need 180 more <laughs> subs, but I'm not worried about it. I'm breaking it down into say five subs a day. Okay. So, and when you do that, you know, you got a reasonable expectation of what you can achieve, right? You're not going to get all those, well, some channels will get all those subs very quickly. But for me, a niche, I'm a small channel. I want to remain a small channel. I'm, you know, I'm trying to reach my goals, but I'm not stressing over it because I've set myself a, a, a manageable number of, of <laughs> of subs or whatever, or goals or hours or views that I want to hit. And, you know, it'd be great when I, if I can, uh, I'm not going to say I can, maybe I'd never get to a thousand. I'm very close. Maybe I don't get there though. That's fine. But if I get there, that'll be great because I will monetize it. And maybe once in a while, uh, once a year or so, once, couple times a year maybe I'll get a check from YouTube and maybe I can put that money into the channel and you know do some fun things with the channel I'll probably keep it fairly straightforward but yeah set goals break the break those goals into manageable chunks and uh, uh, that'll be less stressful doing it that way I find for me the other great thing about YouTube is if you're trying to figure out what kind of videos you want to put up, you'll, you'll notice, you know, a lot of people say, Oh, don't do this. Don't do that. Um, but you know, if you have, for instance, I'm talking about fountain pens, but I also talk about stationery and I also talk about inks a lot. But, uh, what I've have noticed is where I talk about pens, for instance, when I'm talking about pens, Modern pens are more popular than my videos about vintage pens, but I love vintage pens, so I continue to talk about vintage pens, you know, um, and because I love them, and I'm going to continue talking about vintage pens. 
and I love modern pens, and I'll continue to talk about modern pens. So do what you like <laughs> is what I'm kind of I'm trying to say here. Do what you like, right? So um, you know I I might do a video about a fountain pen, especially a popular brand like this, like the Pilot you know, Capless, and it'll get a good number of views, and that's great. I'm happy for that. Or I might do a video about an ink and it won't get a lot of views, but I'm also happy about that because I really love ink and I think, you know, lots of people who are watching the videos also love ink. Same with stationery uh, or paper and things like that. Some of them get more views than others, but I still am going to talk about the things that interest me because that's what I want to do, right? If you only focus on things that are going to, you know, uh, well, you should, uh, if you only focus on the things that you know are going to get you a lot of views, you're going to get a little bored. So talk about the things that interest you. Um, now, the other thing is, when you get into, say, the analytical data that YouTube gives you, you will notice what's a popular video. And also, if you're into, the, say, the fountain pen hobby, you all already kind of know what is going to make an interesting video. For instance, my most successful video so far was my top five modern fountain pens. And I love those types of videos. I watch them all, my, all myself. Anytime I see a, a new YouTuber and they put up their, uh, their top five fa fountain pens, I love watching those because I'm curious to see what they have and if, uh, if my if they if I if it's something I agree with or it's like they maybe they have something that I'm unfamiliar with and so on and it's you know it's I, that those are the videos I like watching myself you know so I've done videos on you know the my favorite fountain pens and my top five accessories and uh, you know uh, <laughs> so those have all done well and then I'll do a video where I'm just talking about, I don't know, just my, my, my vlog, for instance, where I do this little chat where I'm drawing and I just talk about, talk about what's going on. You know, they don't get a lot of views, but I really like doing them. So I keep on doing them every now and then, and I will continue on doing them, and I hope you'll watch them. <laughs> and what else can I tell you about YouTube? One of the great things I've found is I've you know, I've made some connections. Well, I wouldn't say connections. I'm not going to, you know, I, uh, there are people who are kindly commenting on my channel. And, you know, you, you get, I get, I get information and, you know, it's really cool when somebody uh, tells me something about something I don't know, really. That's in an hour they have uh, the same pen as I have and we're chatting and they will send me a comment and I get to comment back and forth. And so there is, you know, what I'm trying to guess, I guess what I'm trying to say is if somebody comments on your channel, respond to it because you know it, it's a social media platform and social media is like that you sort of uh, develop a community and it's part of and you know the, I'm hitting my <laughs> my stand all the time one other thing is I probably would get a better tripod than what I'm using I have to do that um, but yes it's a social media platform so be social because look there people that love fountain pens they're really great and uh, I learn so much all the time from the channel um, and things like that. So, you know, I guess maybe, I, I don't know if this is going to be helpful to you, but you know, I'll just run through it once one last time. So you don't need much. It starts slow. Find a niche, uh, find a format that you're happy with. Around 20 and 30 videos, you'll start getting more information about your channel. You'll get analytical data. Do, spend a little time setting up your channel, make, make a thumbnail for every video, put a banner art piece up, watermarks with a subscribe button. That's all you have to do. You just put that little subscribe button in and YouTube does the rest. You don't have to put any code in. Set manageable goals, you know, and do what you like. <laughs> anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I guess it's kind of a me, one of those, yeah, it's like another vlog video where I'm just chatting about things, but yeah, it's been fun and I really enjoy it and I'm going to keep on doing it and I hope you're along for the ride. And if you have any suggestions of new, uh, what videos you might like to me to do someday, I might not do them, 
because I can't really afford really expensive pens, but you know, uh, <laughs> you know, I have some grail pens uh, that I'm looking forward to doing someday. And, you know, and I'm, but if you have some suggestions about what you'd like to see, I'd love to hear it and uh, like and subscribe as always. And I really appreciate you watching. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.